Hi and welcome back to my channel. So today we'll be making a full website in which we have different pages like you get to see in any website using UiPath apps and let's see how to do it. So before I start explaining that how I did it, I'll just show that actually what I have designed and then we'll see what's the process, how to do it. So if I just click on preview, So this is the app that has been designed. So this is the home page where it's, there's the snip of my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, this could be the header name or your website name. And then there are tabs clicking on which you can navigate to different pages. So this is the home page. Now if I go to contact us, so then I'll get the contact us page. You can obviously modify all this just for the demo purpose I've created this that if you want to contact using LinkedIn, if you want to contact using, though YouTube is not a way to contact, but this is just a sample. So, and also on the click, there has been an event has been, an event will be triggered. So as I click on this one, the LinkedIn would open. Then again, if I go back and I click on YouTube, again, the YouTube would open. So like this, you can even have a form here by which the user can enter the details or you can give the links to different other pages. Now, if I go to the next page of this application, which is about us, so here you can have a description. So this is just a sample description that I've added. And then we can even, we have a register tab so that if you're not a member, then you can even register. So if I enter the name, so I'll enter the name, then you enter the phone number. So I've entered the phone number and I'll click on submit. And on this button click, a process would be triggered wherein you can store the details of the user in a database or in an Excel file so that you could contact the user later or accordingly you add the user details to the a DB of user wherein by using all these details you could actually log into your application so if i click on submit and uh, you'll see here that the process would be triggered here and uh, what i've actually done is that on the click of submit i have written a process i'll just show it so it's a very simple process i've created a data table so build data table using if you see the columns of the data table so it's name and it's phone number and uh, I'll get the details from the form only. So that is the name and phone number of the user. I'll get it from the form that the user would be filling on my application. Then I would add those details to the data table using add data row. So this is my data table name and here I'm just adding the name and phone number. Post that I'm checking that the file in which I actually want to save it is getting created for the first time or it already exists. So if it is getting created for the first time, then I will do right range that is created because right range actually works like if your file does not exist, it will create the file. But if your file already exists, then I have used append range. So this is a very simple process by which you can store the user details. I've published it in the orchestrator. So if we just go to the orchestrator, so we have this process here. So I'll just update the process. So you see this down arrow button, so mean, which means that there's an update available for this process. So I've just updated the process. Okay. And I have connected, so I've created a robot, which is the attended robot and I connected that robot like the normally you connect your orchestrator and your studio via robot. So that normal connection. And so that the app can use that connection to trigger a process. So if I just go here. Okay. And if I'll click on submit, then that process would be triggered here. So this is the UiPath assistant and on the click of submit and also uh, let me just show you that here the file would be created. As of now, we are not able to see any file here, but as I'll click on submit, we will be able to see it. So I've clicked on submit and I'll just open the UiPath assistant. 
So the first one is the process which would be triggered. So initially it was showing awaiting install. It was because we've just updated the process. So now you can see it's written waiting for execution to start and job started processing. On the taskbar also you can see that round thing moving. Okay, so now our process is already being stopped. And if we now go to that location, so we here see here a customer data Excel present here. And if we just open it, then we would get all the details that the user has entered. Okay, so it has entered it in the wrong, like the name is being, the name and the phone number has been switched. So we'll just see why did that happen. So let's go here and we are entering in name and in phone only. And how do you see this? That all the, how do you declare this particular thing is, you just create arguments. Instead of creating variables like we used to do in a normal process, we would create an argument. That means all these argument would come from the application. So let's go back to the application. Let's close this. Let's come here. So this is the register page and if I see in the name, okay, so I have bind the phone number in the name, which is wrong. So that's why we got it the other way. Now, if I just open this thing, I'll say in name, I'll bind the in name value here, which means that this particular argument, which is actually our argument of the process. So even the name is the same, or you could say the name of the variable or name of the argument is also the same because it is getting that, that argument from here only. So whatever you declare that would be available here. So I bind the value and in phone number, I'll have to bind the phone number value. Okay. So now we'll get the correct thing. So let me just delete this. Okay, I have deleted it. Okay, let's again click on preview. And this time we would get the right information stored in the right cell. So I'll enter the name and then I'll enter the And I'll click on submit. So for just demo purpose, I've taken name and phone number, but obviously you can take other information, all the required information. It could be an email, it could be gender, it could be address, it could be all such information, whichever is required for the process. So already our process has stopped. And now if we open the Excel, then we would see that all the information is in the correct field. And now you must be wondering that all this app and creating all these pages must have taken a lot of time or must have taken a lot of styling to be done. But that's not the case. I just used the template which is provided. You can even use that template. So this is the URL where you have been given three templates which you can use. I'll paste the URL of this particular page, this particular docs in the description box below but how to use it. I'll explain how to use it. So if you see this, that in this particular sample, only three tabs were provided and those three tabs were containing some other data. This wasn't actually the thing, but I manipulated it or I modified it according to my need and you could do the same. That would save a lot of time for you. So let's see how do we do it. So this was the app which I created using that template. I just modified it. I'll show you what the actual template looked like. So this is the app studio, or you could say the home page of the UiPath apps from wherein you can create new apps and then the app studio would open for you. So I clicked on create new. So one thing is that I simply create a new app and start developing that app from the scratch. Or the other thing what I can do is I can import from file. So I've downloaded the sample from that particular site or that particular UiPath docs and now I'm going to import it. So I'll just import it. So these are the th three 
you could say the sample so i'll just show the sample which i used to build this thing was the sample tab layout so if i click on okay i'll just give a name to it i'll give using template and i'll click on create so using all these templates which are already provided or are predefined you would actually get an idea that how you could actually modify it how you could actually use it how does how do you link a particular tab to a particular page or how to create all other controls or how to manipulate how to modify them so you would get a fair idea so this was actually the template which i downloaded and then i modified it according to my need so this particular template which i downloaded was having three tabs i added another tab so header tab 1 you click on tab 2 then you go here then you click on tab 3 and you go on the tab 3 1 so there are other templates as well which you can use i'll show one more how you can use it so download it try using it so i'll import from file and now instead of the tab 1 we would pick up the dashboard one and we'll name it dashboard and click on create also if you want to trigger a process on some click or on some typing then i'll show the process for that how you do that so this is a sample template which is available here and obviously this one also you can use accordingly so if we just go to preview to see how it is so if you want to make a dashboard something like this you can utilize this particular template and you know modify all the content here like on off so you see with this toggle button the color is also changing similarly here and then you can add in more information here so all that can be done really easily if you have this template in its place you will just have to scroll down you select this particular container and in here there are a lot of things okay so this is the some other content so inside here you can drag or drop n number of icons buttons whatever you want to so this is how you can utilize the already existing sample templates which are provided now coming to the part that if you really want to trigger a process then what is the procedure so it's very simple first thing is that you write a normal code here in the ypath studio like you used to do earlier for any type of process instead of creating variable if there is anything that you want it as an input from the application or uipath apps then you create that particular thing as in argument and if you have to process it and give back to uipath apps so that that particular thing could be displayed to user then create it as an out argument now suppose if i wanted to create phone number if i wanted that the user registers by entering its name and phone number and i then my process then outputs the user a unique user id so then that could be an output that my application is going to showcase to the user after he has successfully registered so this is the designing part of the studio post that you will just have to do this thing that you connect it to your orchestrator using an attended or an attended robot so then you have a process already attached so you have a process now and you have to call that particular process from your application so now suppose on this button click i wanted to call some process so what i'm going to do is if i click here on dashboard so i get three options of creating a page so the page is the thing like we created in that app home about us register so those are different pages and processes that if i want to call a process so now if i want to call a process i'll click on process so it would get the tenant name of my orchestrator if it does not get then you will just have to simply add in your orchestrator url 
which must have your tenant name. So if I click here, so because I am already connected, I've already entered my orchestrator URL. So in the list, I am seeing my tenant name. So I'll just have to click on next. And here I'm getting all these things. So if I click on default, so that would show all the existing process that are currently on my orchestrator or on the processes menu or processes options of my orchestrator. I can select any of it. So this extracting process does not have any input, does not have any output. If I talk about apps process, so it is having these three as input, these two as output. If I talk about this, then similarly, and if I talk about this, so this is the one which we just, which we just saw. Now you must be wondering that why out ID is not in the output, though I've created it as an output. It is because I made the change here, but I did not publish it. So the change has not been reflected back on orchestrator. So once I publish it, okay. I'll click on publish. Meanwhile, I'll open my orchestrator. Let us check that, yeah, so it has been published and we would get an updated version here on our orchestrator. And once we update our process, so that update would be reflected on our UiPath App Studio also. So that is how you can connect easily. So now you can see that there is an update available. And as soon as I'll update this particular process, I'll say update it, use the latest version. Now if I go back to my UiPath App Studio and I go on process, I'll have to create a process. I'll select my tenant, I'll click on next. I'll pick up that same process which we just saw, apps one. And now you see that this out ID is in the output thing. I'll select it. So now if you see here, you get a process created and you see the name here also. Okay, now if, if you want to use this process on this button click, so I'll just select this select this button, okay. And I go to events and I'll say create role. And out of all these, I'll say that on that particular click of the button, start a particular process. And I'll get the process name by itself because initially only I've configured it. So I'll just say this. And if your robot is attended, then select attended. If it's unattended, then select unattended. For my case, it's unattended. So I'll select unattended. So that's how you actually connect your process from UiPath App Studio and you can update the Excel or you can perform any operation which you normally perform. And I've also showcased that how you can use all these templates. So that's all for this video. Do use these templates so that you could actually create very interesting apps using UiPath App Studio. Thanks for watching the video and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.